Okay, look, I don't really like Obi-Wan. Disney Plus original Obi-Wan Kenobi. <laughs> Should've just been Kenobi because God damn, that's a mouthful. I think the Obi-Wan show isn't good, but it's not due to Disney going woke or that they want to paint their audience racist or something like that. I don't like Kenobi because of its incompetence as a show alongside its core existence. I know that's a strong way for me to come off, but I don't want to just single out Kenobi either. I think that every show by Disney Plus has been extremely mediocre, and it's partially due to the limitations of the Disney Plus format. During the circulation of Kenobi episodes, you had other exclusive releases by competitor platforms, like Netflix's Stranger Things, Amazon Prime's The Boys, and while Better Call Saul had its mid-season break before Kenobi came out, I'm still gonna put it up here because that show is amazing. Did you know that you have rights? <laughs> and with so many shows to watch at once, I did the normal thing, which is to compare everything to one another. And I realized how much I missed the normal TV show format. But Skipper, what's so wrong with Disney Plus? Why is the format so mediocre? Why would you blame a streaming service and not the product? All right, let's reel it back a bit and look at the two big fish of Disney Plus originals. Oh wait, there's only two, Marvel and Star Wars. Who would have thought? So, it's November 2018. Netflix is killing it with original movies and shows, but the shift to streaming service apocalypse is about to unleash with everything having a goddamn subscription. One day even Mr. O'Hare, who sells purified air, will make a plan where you pay $15 a week to fucking breathe. I'm Frankenstein's head on a spider's body! No! Marvel's making billions off movies, Star Wars is making billions off movies, and I'm making pennies off this damn video. <laughs> fucking hate my life. And Disney still wants to make more money and start competition with Netflix by putting all their original media in one place for $7 a month. But paying $7 to rewatch Toy Story over and over is going to get stale really fast. But wait, me, Mickey Mouse, just made billions off of my Marvel movies and Star Wars is crashing and burning. It's a fucking money, baby! This is the ticket. Let's make two TV shows to launch this goddamn cash cow. So boom, you have it. The Mandalorian and WandaVision. The Mandalorian had a lot to prove. I know I said that Star Wars was crashing and burning into money, but they still had problems with general reception and creative thinking. Fix that surge. I'm gonna gangbang you all by myself. The sequel trilogy was about to conclude, so the big money was gonna wither soon. But Lucasfilm made a billion dollars off of Rogue One, which was a spin-off project, so they still had confidence that they could rate the Star Wars make some fat stacks no matter what even without numbered releases then Solo happened. Solo was a fucking nightmare production wise. The original directors were going to be Phil Lord and Chris Miller who made great films like Lego Movie, Spider-Man Into the Spider-Verse, 21 and 22 Jump Street, no! Shooting for the film was three quarters of the way finished and then the directors were fired over creative differences as well as going over budgets. And then days later, director Ron Howard was brought in to finish the movie where he had to reshoot most of it. The budget was almost 300 million and the film would have to make 500 million to even break even and it made 393 million. Which put Disney at an 80 million dollar loss because of advertising and external budgets. They took a fat ass L. What can I say? The flop was mainly due to incompetence production wise. <laughs> Blackmail. I'm not black, I'm OJ. The advertising really sucked. Like, they literally plagiarized the promotional posters. Also, The Last Jedi was controversial and made a lot of people not care about Star Wars. Also, most fans didn't even want a Han Solo movie to begin with. Especially after they heard what Disney had down the pipeline, which was a Boba Fett movie and an Obi-Wan Kenobi movie. But this is Disney Lucasfilm, and they never learned the right lessons. You see, Solo didn't flop because of lackluster production. It was bad because it recasted legacy characters? This was an actual statement made this year by Kathleen Kennedy. It's fucking delusional. The highest praise is that Alden Ehrenreich and Donald Glover had good performances, even though the production was dog shit. Even today, most people would probably take Sebastian Stan over CGI Luke. What I'm trying to say is getting an actor to play a role isn't the goddamn problem to why the movie flopped. But nonetheless, Solo flopped and lost a lot of money. So what did they do? They scrapped the Boba Fett movie, scrapped the Obi-Wan movie, and fucked off until Disney wanted a TV show, so they let Jon Favreau have some fun. What sacrifice it make to make you happy, and then you just smugly just fucking shit on my shit? 
Okay. The Mandalorian was low risk, high reward. It was an original concept with a low production budget due to it using a new VR technology that Jon Favreau also used to make The Lion King. The show was pitched to be like a box of hand-me-down Star Wars toys. You have the Jawas, the Tusken Raiders, and the old Boba Fett toy that you paint silver. It was fun, nostalgic, and a massive success, which is the only important thing to these guys. So what that meant to Lucasfilm was, oh, we can make money this way without spending movie money on shit that could possibly flop. Night bomb. Ah! The Mandalorian was grounded and interesting. It also tested out the Disney Plus format. Eight 40-ish minute episodes that would be released weekly. And since the show was made like a Western, each episode was drastically different from one another. Then two months later, WandaVision was released and there were also eight episodes that were around 30-ish minutes and were very secretive about the show's concept until later episodes. It left you speculating each week about what would happen, making it feel like an actual show instead of a dragged out movie. These two shows had no choice but to really go into the TV show style because there was massive skepticism toward Disney Plus as a streaming service. So these two shows had to really pitch it and they did. Like them or not, compare them to Paramount Plus's Grand Slam, which was the Halo show, where it was insanely cheap looking while also being insanely boring. With hindsight, it's very obvious that Disney kept tight quality control with these two projects because the same effort was never shown again by either side. Okay. On Marvel's side, they dropped from eight episodes to six and focused on making cheap movies instead of proper TV shows. Besides Loki, the quality dropped drastically with the others. Falcon and the Winter Soldier Watch Weekly was obnoxious. It was a shitty MCU movie dragged out with weak cliffhangers. Moon Knight was advertised to be a character study of a guy with DID, but it was just another dragged out movie with shitty acting and mediocre ass writing, not utilizing its awesome concept. If you like Moon Knight, go watch Mr. Robot. It's another story involving a protagonist with DID, but the creator actually has creativity and talent. Fuck Moon Knight. What I'm saying is since people were already hooked off these debut projects, there wasn't incentive to try anymore. And that's why you got filler shows to maintain a circulation of content. But let's go back to Star Wars and see what happened with them. Where The Mandalorian was an isolated project, season two was a backdoor pilot to the Star Wars cinematic universe. Introducing characters like Bo-Katan, Boba Fett, Ahsoka Tano, and Luke Skywalker. But while having to juggle all this backdoor promotion, the show still held its own visually. The Mandalorian season one and two still look better than anything to come out of TV, Marvel, or Lucasfilm. Look at She-Hulk and the Book of Boba for fuck's sake. The Book of Boba is where we can now pinpoint the massive decline of TV Star Wars. It was cheap looking, poorly directed, poorly written, and codependent off of fan service that had no substance. Instead of making a nice looking show about Boba Fett, the second half gets hijacked by The Mandalorian, where it yoinks in a bunch of cameos to make the man children shout, every week. But some caught on quickly that the show was really bad. I have a friend named Typo who made a whole video about why the show is a mess, so watch that if you're interested. This guy stinks! But the point I'm trying to make was that the quality of The Mandalorian was not kept for the show. It was obvious that the show was pumped out to meet a quota, since there wasn't going to be a Mandalorian season 3 that December. Which is disappointing, because in a different multiverse, we possibly could have gotten a really good Boba Fett movie. Which would have definitely performed well, because it's a movie about Boba Fett who is loved by the Star Wars fandom. But instead he was put into a show to advertise his show, where the best part about his show was never him, but instead the cameos from other pieces of media to also advertise their shows. Like I said, MCUing Star Wars. And that's when we get to Obi-Wan Kenobi. Let me take a second to remind you that Disney is worth $200 billion. And Lucasfilm, who is owned by Disney, is also worth a couple billion dollars themselves. I know Obi-Wan Kenobi is a TV show, but anyone miles away could have been able to tell that this was going to be their most successful show yet on Disney+. Plus. So why does it look so cheap? The TV excuse for the production is bullshit. As we discussed earlier, there's multiple scenes from the two seasons of The Mandalorian that are well shot, lit, choreographed, and directed. Some episodes look like shit, but that can happen when you take a risk and give the guy who made Spy Kids an episode. If this was a fan series, then it's really high quality, but it isn't. It's a mini series backed by billion dollar productions, and a core problem to the whole show was its awful directing. The camera work was fucking horrendous. Every action scene looks like someone dragged in the S shake plug from Sony Vegas. It almost feels deliberate, like a goal and set was to make every scene as obnoxious as possible. I'll speed up this action scene so it could be more obvious, but the cinematographer either had Parkinson's or a wicked ass troll face behind the camera. 
I know Disney Star Wars has made big oopsies over the years, but if you look at the action scenes from Rogue One, Solo, and The Mandalorian, you can still find decent camera work, lighting, and editing at times. I actually find it insane that someone gave the green light to this scene in the first episode where Leia is dodging full-grown bounty hunters. The lighting is shit, the set looks like they drove to some random ass forest somewhere in California. <laughs> The set design is really lazy and uninspired, and some want to say it's because they relied a lot on the volume, but that's a piss poor excuse. When used correctly, the volume can be really effective. There are scenes in the Batman that are breathtaking and were done straight from the volume. Same with the Mandalorian, but in Kenobi you have scenes that just don't look hot. The prequels have dated CGI for sure, but the environments are at least original and interesting, so I'll give it a pass. But the shit in Kenobi is just straight lazy. In this scene, you could tell me that Obi-Wan is somewhere in bumfuck Arizona, I would believe you. In this scene, you could tell me that Obi-Wan and Darth Vader were in an episode of The Sopranos, fighting on a construction site, and I would also believe you. What is your problem with Anakin Skywalker? He's a fag. And? <laughs> Here you have Battle of the Hallway, but it's sluggish and annoying, not done in a cool way like this movie. Hell, as much as it hurts to say, even this movie did it better. It's still not good, but better. Fuck you! Yeah! Battle of the Open Door. Gotta stop shaking the camera! I like how in Revenge of the Sith, you had the final battle on different set pieces, with fun camera work to match the amazing choreography. But for this show's final fight, you have a set piece in the volume, which is a flat, boring planet that is also extremely underlit. The lighting in this show is so atrocious. Tatooine keeps proving that Star Wars has lost the ability to make a desert look cool and instead look like a Nickelodeon set. Tatooine in the original trilogy was a barren desert, but they found a way to still make it interesting with weird wildlife. And even though Jakku is a knockoff of Tatooine, it did the same thing, to not make it feel like a small set piece, but instead a big wasteland. And a lot of this could be fixed by just adding dynamic lighting. In Kenobi, the sets are either super bright or dark as hell, making it once again feel like a fan film. In The Mandalorian, you have warm and cold colors used effectively. I don't know why the two main fights are shot in the dark. It makes the lightsaber glow too overbearing and the choreography doesn't help this either. Production aside though, the writing for the show is also a huge fucking mess, but that alone could be like an hour long video. There was a fan version of the show where they cut out all the filler and compiled the series into a two hour long movie. And it gives you perspective about the missed potential of the show, which brings up the whole point of this video. The Disney Plus format sucks. Instead of getting great shows, you get dragged out movies. Instead of getting great movies, you get dragged out ones with filler. If Kenobi was a movie, like originally planned, it probably would have had a better script, had more production budget, and would have made a lot more money. It still doesn't excuse its piss poor execution though. Recently the trailer for the Andor show came out, and even that looks like it has more effort put in than Kenobi. With the Disney Plus format, it's easier to pump out content quickly, but also sets a dangerous precedent. With so much content to consume and enjoy, you get shit perspectives like this dumbass. When you clap your hands to everything, projects will cut corners because you're going to like it anyway. No matter how flawed and lazy, shit will get a pass for just existing. Daredevil's an amazing show, and now it's getting 18 episodes for its new Disney Plus show, with each being 25 minutes long without having the same directors or writers. I fear it's going to be mediocre in comparison to its original three seasons, when it followed a normal one hour format without the Disney cloud. A lot of shows on the Disney Plus format are popcorn circulation content, and could be so much better. Can, can we watch something else? It's, it's, it's about to get really good. It's about to get really good. Trust me. They aren't comparable to shows with great quality and actual care like Breaking Bad, Mr. Robot, The Sopranos, Better Call Saul, or Daredevil. But at the moment, though, Disney doesn't have much competition, with Stranger Things not releasing another season till 2024. And Warner Brothers doing whatever the fuck they're doing with their streaming service and everything as a whole. So what's the point of switching? The shows make money, they're easy to make, and people will find any excuse to defend them by something as simple as brand loyalty. I have a feeling Mando Season 3 will attempt to keep a level of quality because that's the big boy for the service. And Andor looks interesting, I'll admit it. But the nail in the coffin will be the Daredevil show if it sucks, which it most likely will. But that's it from me. Tell me in the comments if you like or dislike the Disney format. Thank you so much for 100k. And if you want to see more videos like this, subscribe. Wait, Cars is getting a show? Disney Plus has saved everybody. Fuck this video. No is. Loneliness is a new to me. We done this. This is not the murder mystery. McDonald's, I was broke in paradise. I spoke a prison when she set the price. Got me right to master business in my extra life. Rappers turning boys, boy, been turning into psychos.